Tonight, the battles begin. The best home cooks in America go head to head to claim a coveted MasterChef white apron, a spot in the MasterChef kitchen, and the chance to win the ultimate prize. Across the nation, Home Cook showed up in the thousands. I'm the next Master Chef. You're looking at the next Master Chef. From all walks of life. I'm a nurse. I'm a horse trainer. I'm a teacher, and I teach my friends. I'm a firefighter. Representing Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The 40 best have been invited to the Master Chef kitchen to prove themselves. To the food world's biggest names. I'm the owner of a multi michelin starred food empire, Gordon Ramsay. Internationally renowned pastry chef, Christina Tozzi. And joining us throughout the season, some very special guest judges, including the legendary Wolfgang Puck. For those who make it, the veterans are arriving. We'll take them to new heights. And down on the farm, gotta be quick. For better or worse, Brian and Drew, where is it? They'll face the toughest challenges in MasterChef history. Crazy. Creating dish after stunning dish. It's good. I'm seriously impressed. They'll battle it out for a quarter of a million dollars, their own cookbook, and the title of MasterChef. Not only can I save lives, but I can put magic on a plate. Woof! I work at a credit union in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I've been doing it for 15 years, and I hate it. So getting an apron is a ticket to my future. I'm ready to feed people. That is what I was put on this earth to do. I'm Christina Tozzi. And you are 40 of the most passionate home cooks in all of America. Welcome to MasterChef. You're all from incredibly different walks of life, but you all share the same dream, to become America's next MasterChef. Who here thinks they have what it takes to win it all? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, what's the wave about? What's your story? I am Miss San Diego 2015. Wow. And so I have a lot of competition experience. I can go the distance and shine when you need to shine. I can do that. I'm a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> right, where's Dan? Right here, chef. How confident are you? Guys my age, no one really expects us to be good at cooking. But little do they know, I'm in my prime, I got a college degree, and I got a whole lot of swag. So I am super confident that this frat guy is going to be the next master chef. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> you are the top 40 home cooks in America, but you still need to win one of these. A MasterChef white apron. There's just one obstacle now standing between you and a white apron. A battle. You are all about to embark on an epic culinary journey. One of you will be America's next MasterChef. Yeah. Are you all ready? Yeah. Ready to show us that you deserve to win a MasterChef apron. Here to cheer you on before you head to your battles are your friends and family. All of you, good luck. In the battle for a white apron, the home cooks will face off over their signature dishes. The judges will then decide who wins a MasterChef white apron and a place in the top 20. Competition's going down. 
Our first battle for an apron features Brandy and Samson, two diverse home cooks going head to head over steak. I'm gonna get this apron. This is hard. I know. Brandy is a fifth grade teacher from Kentucky who hopes to use her southern flavors to school the competition. Mm. Guys, let's throw books away for a minute. I'm from a very small town called Irvington, Kentucky. Everybody knows everybody. The girl is fearless. She makes great food. We have so many farms, we definitely have more cows than people in our county. We got our first red light when I was in high school. I think we have two now. I am a super proud Kentucky girl. I'm proud of my Southern heritage and what it's done for my cooking. In the South, we don't limit what we cook. It's flaky, it's buttery, it's delicious. We don't count our carbs. I'm gonna get you a white apron. Give me one. I stand in front of 24 children every day and I tell them they can do anything they want to and to reach for the stars and that's really why I'm here. And it doesn't matter where you come from or who you are, it's, it's possible. Standing in her way is Samson, a California mixologist looking to shake things up. I'm gonna treat this competition like a cocktail with finesse, flavor, and passion. Being a mixologist is an incredibly important part of my life because a lot of the flavors I get to play around inspire what I do in the kitchen. I was raised as an Orthodox Jew and I spent 20 years keeping kosher. I didn't have my first cheeseburger until I was in college. My world of food Explode it. I have my mom here. I'd be nervous as all hell, are you kidding me? My family is still kosher and I am not. So I'm sort of the black sheep, but it's afforded me the opportunity to experience the world in a way different than everyone else in my family. This is the battle of the steak. I've cooked a million steaks at home. I can cook a steak with my eyes closed. I have all of Kentucky counting on me. I'm bringing the apron home. Being in the MasterChef kitchen means that my family will finally see what I'm trying to do. That apron's coming my way, come hell or high water. No one's standing in my way for that. Welcome. This is the MasterChef kitchen. Two very talented cooks, one apron up for grabs, with one spot in the top 20. Are we both ready? I'm super excited. I'm pumped. Yes, sir. Can you outsmart the country girl? I mean, she is a teacher, but I think I'm about to teach her a lesson. We'll find out. Tonight is the Battle of the Stakes. You both have 30 minutes to nail it. The time starts... ...now. So, Brandy, what are you making for us? I am making you a cast iron skillet seared steak with a Kentucky bourbon cream sauce and a Parmesan herb crusted tomato. I came from a country kitchen, so my mother knows how to cook, my grandmother, my great grandmother. And what's the secret to your pan seared New York strip? The cast iron skillet is absolutely the secret. I have one at home that's 100 years old. It's my great grandmother's, never been touched by soap and water. I love it. Woo! Wait, two minutes to go. Samson, describe your dish, please. I'm making a pan-seared steak on a roasted parsnip puree with a reduction of port and pomegranate. A little tarragon and chocolate in there. Tarragon and chocolate? Yes, sir, a little chocolate to balance out that tartness. Mixologist? Yes, sir. Why? Mixology is a uh, craft, and developing flavors and building cocktail menus day in and day out is everything that I try to do. So you can make a drink, but can you cook a steak? Can I cook a steak? <laughs> Ten minutes to go. So, the battle of the steaks. Brandy's already seared her New York strip. She's mm -hmm. finishing it in the oven. I love that Brandy's doing that down home baked tomato. Samson's New York strip is beautifully seared on both sides. I've got a funny feeling that Samson's is gonna look like something from the French Laundry and it's gonna be all fancy. I'm just worried that he has too many flavors going on. I mean, things could still go wrong for Brandy if Samson nails the cook on that New York strip. 60 seconds to go. One apron up for grabs and a place in the top 20. Go, guys. Jeez. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, mm. 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Hands in the air. Well nice done. Nice job. Please bring both your dishes down to the front.
Brandy, describe the dish, please. Uh, this is a cast iron skillet steak with a Kentucky bourbon cream sauce, roasted mushrooms, and a Parmesan crusted tomato. What are we looking for inside here? We want it to be medium rare. The steak is cooked beautifully. Mm. Steak you've nailed. Smart as I love. It is ugly, but <laughs> it tastes delicious. Good job. Thank you very much. The New York Strip. It's tender. It's clear that you know your way around. Cast iron skillet. The mushrooms for me are a little underwhelming. They could have taken a lot more time in the oven. I but agree. overall, I love that you kept it simple. Thank you. Samson, describe the dish, please. I made a pan-seared steak on a roasted parsnip puree with a reduction of port and pomegranate. Where's the chocolate? Chocolate's in the sauce, chef. Right. I wanted to use bittersweet chocolate to balance the tartness of the pomegranate. Smart. See, that's the exciting thing about watching you cook. You think it'd be step. Sauce is good. However, you can't really taste the chocolate. But the steak you've nailed. Good job. Thank you. Hmm. Juicy steak. The port, the chocolate. They bring a nice acidity, a nice tartness, a nice richness to the dish. But I wish the parsnip puree were thicker, and I wish it were silkier. But really beautiful presentation. Thank you very much, Chef. Right, this is tough. Samson, you put food on a plate like a finalist. It looks like art. Brandy, you know, the flavor you bring and the profile you put on that plate, it's mind blowing. So, this is really tough. We wish that you weren't in the same battle. Quite frankly, you both deserve an apron. This apron, and with it, a place in the MasterChef kitchen belongs to Brandy and Samson have had just 30 minutes to prepare their signature steak dishes in a head-to-head -head battle. Now, only one will win a coveted white apron and a place in the top 20. This apron is heading to the south. Brandy, congratulations. Put that apron on. Brandy, well done. Flavor profile. You can't teach that. Samson, well done. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Well done, babe. Congratulations. Here we go. It's never fun to lose, but the privilege to be in that kitchen and the honor to be in front of those two amazing cooks is an opportunity and a memory I will take with me forever. You deserve it. I am so excited to be in the top 20 for MasterChef. <laughs> ah! It doesn't matter where you come from, a big city or a small town. If you work hard, then your dreams really can come true. I got an apron. <laughs> I got an apron. <laughs> Up next, a battle of the bakers. I got that Latin flavor. <laughs> I come from a huge Cuban family where food is everything. Whether it's arroz con frijoles, ropa vieja, sweet plantain, everybody gets together and eats their face off. When I was little, I was always in the kitchen with my abuelita. It was always just so natural. I may be the youngest, but I was born for that apron, you know that, right? Getting that MasterChef apron would just complete me. It would be like my Superman cape of Cuban food. I would be saving the world. <laughs> Andrea's competition is 28-year-old Taylor. I am the all-American girl from Texas. I was captain of the cheerleading. I was chair of my sorority. I was captain of my volleyball team. I've always had very high expectations, so you put anything in front of me, I'll own it. And it's like that with food for me. We are going to be baking for Christina Tosi, which is amazing. <laughs> 
Baking is my passion. Baking takes a lot of perfection. I know what ambition it takes. I know the drive it takes. And I'm going to prove that in the MasterChef kitchen. People definitely underestimate me because I'm young. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove them wrong. And I'm going to earn some respect in that kitchen. I know what it takes to win. And now I'm going to be queen of MasterChef. Winning this cupcake battle is going to be so sweet. Welcome. This is the battle of cupcakes. Ladies, you'll have just 45 minutes to make us the most important cupcake of your young life. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Your time starts now. Taylor, describe the cupcakes, please. Um, chef, I'm doing a fluffy yellow classic cupcake with a lemon raspberry buttercream. You've whipped the egg whites separately. Why? I wanted to add a little bit more air at the end and fold it in, give it a, more of a fluffy texture. Andrea, tell me about your cupcake. So I'm making a guava cupcake topped with a cream cheese frosting. It's kind of a Cuban tradition to eat guava and cheese after a meal. I love a good pastelito. Exactly. Boom. Dangers tonight would be the batter insufficient rice. If the balance of sugar and salt and those leavening ingredients are off, we're not going to get a cupcake. We're going to get like a cup muffin. Ladies, just under 30 minutes remaining. They have to go in the oven. They yeah. have to. Come on, speed up. Andrea's got a cupcake in the oven. That's a good timing. Taylor's is in one minute after Andrea. Ladies, 20 minutes to go. Taylor, how you looking? Relax, babe. Deep breath. Um, they're, they're falling a little bit. Maybe you overfolded those egg whites into the batter before I, they went I in. I think I might have. Damn it. Oh, Gordon. Is there any way she can bring this back? She needs to leave the cupcakes in the oven and just let them be. Yeah. This could be a real problem. Nothing she can do no. now will save them. What the hell? Stunning sets of cupcakes. Why are they? Only one apron. Taylor, how you looking? They don't look like I want them to look right now. They're falling a little bit. Gordon, this could be a real problem. Nothing she can do no. now will save them. Look, Andrea's cupcakes have just come out. Ladies, just coming up for five minutes remaining. Taylor's are out. Andrea's starting to pipe. Her hands wow. are steady. I know. She's twisting that yeah, cupcake smart. like it's on a cake stand. Yeah. Taylor is rotating herself around the cupcake. Beautiful. One minute to go. I'm like sweating. I am too. Let's go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, seven six, six, five, five four, four, three, three two, one. And stop, ladies. Hands in the air. Nice Woo! job. Great job. Oh. Ladies, please bring your plates forward. Oh my. It's beautiful. All right, Taylor. Yes, sir. Tell me about these cupcakes. These are a classic yellow cupcake with a raspberry lemon buttercream topped with a sugared raspberry and a dash of lemon zest to give a little kick. Now I see, oops. I can tell already something went wrong with the cake because even just pulling off the paper, I'm having a hard time, which definitely is a sign of um, uneven mixing, yeah, when you whipped those egg whites in. Ooh. The, the ratio. ratio, yeah, you see it just like I do. That ratio of frosting to cake is definitely not in line with the cupcake. Mm. The frosting is delicious, it's bright, it's zesty. With those flavors, you're definitely still in the fight. Very bold attempt to whip up the egg whites separately and incorporate. That's a very smart way of doing it, but a bit of a risk. Mm. My god. It's delicious. The flavor's there. The texture of the batter is nowhere near as good as it should be, but I'm going to commend you for the risk. All right, Andrea, tell me about these cupcakes. 
I made a guava cupcake topped with a cream cheese frosting with some toasted coconut flakes. I think the real test is gonna be if your cupcake paper peels off. Look at that. Beautiful. It's really all about the flavor at this point. I like that you didn't take the cream cheese too sweet. I have to say I'm missing a little bit of the guava. I was hoping to get a little bit more of that sort of like tropical punch of guava. Yes, chef. But really great job. Why guava? I really wanted to bring the Caribbean flavors. That's why I put coconut as the topping. I taste coconut frosting, but I don't taste guava. However, frosting delicious. Love the toasted coconuts. This is a really, really tough battle. We don't like saying goodbye to talent because producing cupcakes like this in 45 minutes, that's the kind of talent that we thrive on working with. One apron, and it's going to... I didn't get a white apron, but I'm so proud of myself, and Andre is gonna make it really far in this competition. <laughs> Winning this MasterChef apron proves that although I may be young, I have what it takes to be in this competition. Like, doesn't this look good on me? Come on. Our next battle features four American heroes who have all the credentials to handle the heat of the MasterChef kitchen. My name is Joe. I have been a lieutenant on the fire department for about three years, but my true passion is cooking. I'm about 20 pounds heavy since he started working here. My grandfather owned one of the best Italian restaurants in Brooklyn. And when I cook, I make sure that my Italian heritage shines bright. I feel my grandfather's blood running through my veins right now. I'm more than ready to knock this competition out of the park. We're proud. We're, we're always yeah. proud. You're going to make the boys in Midtown proud, too. Yeah. My name is Eric, firefighter born and raised in Queens, New York. My grandfather, my dad, and my uncle were all New York City firemen. Growing up in the firehouse, I got like a real appreciation for cooking. And that's where I learned a lot of techniques. Boom, oh, there you have it. There is no harsher critic than a table full of New York City firemen. I may be a third generation firefighter, but I'm gonna be going home today as the number one home cook. My name is Freddie from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I am the oldest firefighter in this battle. But pressure is nothing to me. I've fallen through floors. I pick people up and drag them out of fire. So pressure is just another spice on the rack that I'm going to use to burn my competition. Welcome, guys. Come on down, please. My name is Manny from Old Town, Orlando, Florida. As a station cook, I please palates, but I always do something different every day. I love pushing the envelope, and this firefighter is ready to extinguish the competition and get my white apron and show Gordon Ramsay how to do this bad boy. It's the battle of the firehouses made the best company win. Four of you stand in front of us tonight, but just two will pick up those coveted white aprons. You guys are going to have 45 minutes to make us your signature firehouse dishes. Your 45 minutes starts now. Hey, boys, you see that thing underneath your pants? Yeah. That's what fire looks like. Oh, oh, oh OK. Get us some jokes, though, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Manny, tell me what you're cooking. I'm doing a chimichurri steak with white rice, black beans, caramelized plantains. I'm born and raised in Miami, so I always get infused with the Caribbean. It's kind of my go-to. Why did you decide to become a firefighter? I follow my father's footsteps. I love that I get to uh, cook for the guys, you know. You like to eat, too, right? I ain't get big like this on magic, you know. It takes work. I do work out, but I just... Which part of your body do you work out with? You know, I work on my ab. I have one ab. <laughs> Bam, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, 30 minutes to go. 
Freddie, where did you pick up those knife skills? In the firehouse, but I've been cooking since I was about 10 years old. Wow. Give us an insight to the dish you're cooking, please. Uh, I am making a chicken curry. What's the blend? The blend I have cumin, curry powder, and ginger. Curries take time. Can you get that curry to where you want to go in 45 minutes? Oh, absolutely. I've done it many times. This is something on the menu that I can cook quickly. That's my job. Mm. Eric, what about you? What are you cooking tonight? I work in one of the busiest firehouses in New York City. We do about 6,000 runs a year. So you got to have something that's quick to grab. So we're going to do a ground turkey, cabbage, kale, and carrots, spring roll. It's going to be pretty damn good. Joe, you got a great sear on that chop in there. Tell me what you're cooking. I'm making a smothered pork chop, Italian style. And then I have crumbled hot and sweet sausage, arugula, some Swiss chard. It's a heart attack waiting to happen. Interesting. We have. 15 minutes to go, guys. Hey, you're looking over there, Fred. I always look good. I beg to differ. Right, Joe's smothered pork chop. Look at the thickness of that chop. Can we get that cooked? Rest it for 45 minutes? Risky, for sure. Eric's turkey spring rolls. Mm. He's going to have to really get some flavor into those spring rolls. Yeah. Smells fantastic. And then Freddy on the end. Chicken curry. It's not made in 45 minutes. It takes hours. Mm. And mm. Manny just seems to be eating. <laughs> mama, mama, mama. 60 seconds to go, guys. Pressure, pressure. Start thinking about your plating. All right, boys, come on. Finish up. Let's get this plates on. Let's get them up. Four firefighters, two aprons up for grabs. 15 seconds to go. Make it count, guys. Come on. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And stop, guys. Hands in the air. Four firefighters, two aprons up for grabs. Make it count, guys. Come on. Let's get this place on. Let's get them up. All right, boys. Come on. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. And stop, guys. Hands in the air. Hands in the air, guys. Nice job. Well done. Whew. OK, very carefully, all four of you come down to the front. Thank you. All right, guys. Four amazing firefighters. Four brilliant home cooks. But there's just two places in the MasterChef kitchen. Freddie, tell me about the dish. What we have here is a chicken curry. It's made with three spices. Also chopped up some carrots, onions, and some celery inside. And what cut of chicken did you use? I'd use the chicken thigh. It gives off a little bit more flavor than just the breast. Curry's good. You got a nice heat to it. I like the pine nuts in the rice. I think that gives it a really nice nuttiness, really holds the heat of the curry. I wish you just had more time, because curry really needs that flavor yes. to develop. But overall, it's clear why you are the cook in your firehouse. It's nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Eric, describe the dish, please. This is a ground turkey egg roll. Inside, it's got kale, cabbage, carrots. You said that's ground turkey? Yes, chef. Are you saying that we need to get on a diet? No, chef. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, as firefighters, we have to stay health conscious. They're actually really delicious. Thank you, Chef. I love the spice, the heat, the crunch of the cabbage. Yes, Chef. Smart move with the turkey. Almost like you caramelized the turkey. I did with the uh, shells, Chef. Mm, really good. Well done. Thank you, Chef. All right, Manny, what's the dish? I made chimichurri steak, white rice, black beans, and then I have some sweet plantains caramelized with some brown sugar. Nice cook on that steak. Thank nice you. Nice mid rare. Black beans, nice flavor, bright, fresh. The plantains are delicious. Thank you. I think presentation could have been a little bit tighter, a little bit more neat, but nice job. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Joe, discard the dish, please. It's a pan-seared pork chop smothered with Swiss chard and arugula with a Yukon gold and purple potato. What temp in the middle? 150. So we're going medium? Yeah. Right. That was in the oven for how long? It was in the oven for about eight minutes. Did you baste it before it went in there? I didn't baste it. See how white it is. Mm. What does that mean? More overdone. You've got a great sear on there, but it's chewy because it's slightly overcooked. The dish, in general, is good. I just wish you hadn't put that pork chop in the oven. Yes, chef. Otherwise, you would have nailed it. Thank you. Thanks, chef. It's, tough. it's very tough. I'm 
Unfortunately, guys, there's only two aprons up for grabs. You know that. Yes, sir. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. The two aprons belong to... Words. This is one of the greatest moments of my life. Are you shaking? Yeah, I'm shaking. <laughs> Getting this FDNY on my shirt was one of the proudest moments of my life. And now I have a Master Chef apron, and I'd say it's just as big. <laughs> I'm going to take this apron, I'm going to win this sucker, win this $250,000, I'm going to bring it back to Station One, and we're going to put plays on everybody. Woo! <laughs> Coming up. When two young dads roll the dice, wow. whose culinary wow. gamble will pay off? If it's yours, pick it up and put it on. The Master Chef Kitchen oh, damn. is truly Come on, take it. a melting pot. I'm a handyman. I'm the right tool for the right job. I'm from New Jersey. I'm a mom. I come from a very big Sicilian family. I'm a tuxedo salesman from Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. You pretty much can't find it on any map. I'm a retired golf pro, and you're the oldest ever competitor. I send those youngsters packing. I want to show them. I'm an investigator. Can you elaborate on that? Do you really want me to? <laughs> and it's the specialized skills. Who told you to chop like that? <laughs> of these talented home cooks. Look at that. That has transformed them. You cook like an angel. It's delicious. Thank you. Wow, you've absolutely nailed it. You blew the two of us away. Into potential master chefs. This apron goes to Terry. Oh, Phil. Barbara. <laughs> Nathan. Lisa Ann. And proud winners of four more master chef aprons. <laughs> Our next home cook is David, a 35-year-old who has made winning a habit. I'm a professional poker player. My first appearance was when I played at the World Series of Poker and came second place in the main event for three and a half million dollars. <laughs> I've had numerous titles, including winning the World Poker Tour Championship in 2010. And now I'm somewhere in the top 50 poker players in the world. Pretty much whatever day it is, I'm just playing poker, making money, eating good food, living the high life. But five years ago, all of that sort of changed. Do you cook? No, not yet, but I pretend. I have a five-year-old daughter named Liliana, and uh, she is the greatest thing in the world. Here you go. Mmm, yummy. When you have a child, your priorities shift. You take a little bit less risk at the poker tables. You realize that you have someone else whose life is in your hands. World Series of Poker Bracelet, World Poker Tour Championship, best trophy of all, picture of me and my daughter. You really learn what matters, and that's being a good example for her and giving her lots of love. And I feel that with cooking, I get to do that. You're my master chef. Oh. Nothing gives me more joy than when I serve someone something I've made and seeing their eyes light up. That experience is sort of like the opposite of poker. It's why I cook. I love you. I love you, too. This is for you. Betting against David is Joe, a marketing manager from Philadelphia who seems to have it all. He's got the poker face, but I've got the confidence and the intelligence, the ability to learn everything and anything that I need to know. From the outside, you're going to look and say, that guy's cocky, he's arrogant, full of himself. But when you get to know me, you see what I'm about. I'm passionate. I worked in fine dining as a marketing director. Having worked in some of the best restaurants in the world, there is not a single contestant who has a better palate than I do. I'm going to go whip up that pork that you taught me how to make. Maybe I'll get the chance to introduce you to Chef Ramsay, huh? He has to meet the Master Chef winner's son. My son is the love of my life. The same passion, drive, care that goes into my cooking goes into being a father. Ooh. All right, here we go. I have the perfect job. I have the perfect wife. My son is nothing but perfect. I just need that perfect white apron. Welcome, guys. Woo! I'm approaching this battle the same way I would a poker tournament. Master Chef is my final table, and I'm going all in. 
Right, gentlemen, this is the battle of the pork chops. The biggest 30 minutes in your culinary life starts now. Joe, tell me about the dish. So this evening, the chef has prepared for you a brandied cherry pork chop, roasted garlic cauliflower puree with cauliflower florets. What's in the blender? Manchego cheese, Parmesan cheese. Also be adding just a touch of a British favorite here, Marmite. You know what Marmite is, right? It's the yeast extract. Marmite will actually be in my brandy sauce. You got a lot of ingredients working. Joe, what do you do for a living? I worked in marketing. I had several different restaurant concepts. We had a French concept. We had a steakhouse concept. So for me, it was important to get to know the chefs and their flavors. How's it going now? It folded about six months after I left, and I had nothing to do with it. The rest is now closed. <laughs> <laughs> 20 minutes to go. Thank you, Chef. David, what do you got working? I'm making you guys a pork chop with blue cheese grits, sauteed escarole topped with caramelized onions. Why not a cheddar cheese grits? The blue cheese brings that sourness to kind of go with the bitterness of the escarole and the salty of the pork chop and the sweetness of the caramelized onions. You get a balance. Everything is about balance. What do you do for a living? I'm a professional poker player. How much money have you earned this year? What are you, the IRS? Uh, <laughs> Career earnings? About $9 million. Not bad for a young man. A fraction of you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, just under 10 minutes to go. Two amped up, serious contenders. I mean, they both have jeopardy because pork is unforgiving. You don't want to see pink, pink pork. I'm not eating pink, pink pork. David's pork's bone out, so not so thick could dry out very quickly yep. because of that. Joe's pork chop, bone in, that's a little bit harder. It's a little trickier. But if you get it right, then it's absolutely rich and delicious. Watch your eyebrows, Joe. It's master chef, not soak the soleil. <laughs> Last minute, guys, come on. Want to see a dish worthy of a master chef apron. Finishing touches, make sure those plates are spotless. 10 seconds, guys. Here we go. Eight, ah. seven, six. six. Five, four, three, three, two, one. Hands in the air. Well done. Nice job, guys. Ah. Bring your pork dishes forward to the front, please. After you, sir. Let's go. Joe, describe the dish, please. I have a beautiful brandy cherry pork chop, cooked medium, mm -hmm. a puree of roasted garlic and cauliflower with cauliflower florets. You're a gambling man? Yes, sir. I'll gamble you right now a million dollars of that. Pork in the center is not medium. <laughs> no bet. You're a gambling man? Yes, sir. I'll gamble you right now a million dollars of that. Pork in the center is not medium. <laughs> no bet. <laughs> Just touch the center of that. Slightly under? Just missed it. How long was it in the oven for? Pan sear the whole way, sure. Butter baste it. Love the sear. It's crispy and it's delicious. When you cook a pork chop on the bone that thick, it needs to go in the oven to cook it evenly. Wasn't a big fan of the yeast extracts, but it actually works. Cherries, brilliant. But the hero, you've undelivered. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. Mm. Got some you. real flavors going on in there. I get some spice that feels a little bit overbearing, but I see the potential in this dish. Thank you. All right, David, tell us what's on your dish. It's a pork chop with blue cheese grits, sauteed escarole topped with caramelized onion, blue cheese crumbles, and a little bit of thyme. Now, you chose a chop without the bone. What are we going for cook-wise? Medium. It's beautiful. Thank you. Mm. I think the escarole is very smart. The thyme, I could do without. But overall, it's a very thoughtfully composed dish. Thank you, nice chef. job. Pork's cooked beautifully, but grit, difficult to elevate. Blue cheese, did it work? It's a very dangerous game, that. Because you love blue cheese, it doesn't mean to say we're going to love it. So pull back on that, because it's very salty. Thank you. 
Thank you, Chef. Give us a moment, please. Man, just have a moment. Ciao, Thank you, you too. Happy? Yeah. One of you knows that you deserve a spot in the top 20. So, if it's yours and you know it is, pick it up and put it on. I thought when my pork would rest, it would rest to a medium, and it just didn't quite get there. David was a worthy opponent, so I'm happy for him and his daughter. Proud of you. I've learned my lesson. You shouldn't gamble against poker players. To have my daughter see me come out with a Master Chef apron, it makes me feel like the best dad in the world. I'm proud of you, Daddy. Next time, the search for America's next Master Chef continues. For one of you, this is it. With only 10 white aprons remaining, the competition heats up. The best way to turn your lady on is to turn your stove on. Mm. <laughs> 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 In some of the most intense battles. What is he doing? The Master Chef Kitchen what? has ever seen. I'm screwed. You've got to start placing, young man. He's you falling apart. One potato, two potato.